Are you looking for a new MMA website to check out? Then get over to MMARecords.com. For the latest news, analysis, videos, in-depth blogs, fighter interviews, and more. From the local shows to the UFC, MMARecords.com has you covered. You can find MMA Wreckage on social media, on Twitter at MMA Wreckage, or on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MMA Wreckage. So stay up to date with all things MMA at MMARecords.com. Manus flat on the canvas. We are ready to rock and roll. Second round of action. There is a cut on Manus. Yeah. <laughs> it's just My man B Hop got knocked out, dropped out the ring last night. I need a little judo baby. I need me a little judo baby. And uh, let's, let's do it, Ron. Let's see what they She got face for video. She got face for video. Martial arts. Chat. Martial Arts Chat. Hello, welcome to Martial Arts Chat Podcast. And on Martial today's Arts episode, Chat. we are joined by MMA and UFC referee, Mr. Bobby Wombacher. Bobby, Martial how are you, sir? Chat. I'm doing fantastic. And yourself? Oh, it's, it's great to finally have you on. We were just sort of speaking prior to the show there. Uh, you know, we've been trying to put this together for a while, my friend, and I guess life <laughs> got in the way for both of us. <laughs> Uh, but I'm delighted you're, you're, you're finally on and we've got a chance to meet and speak. And for those that don't know Bobby, uh, as I mentioned at the start of the show there, he's, a, he's an MMA official with a long-standing career. But um, I'll, I'll let you take the floor, Bobby. Let everyone know um, uh, how you got into refereeing and, and, and a bit about your life, sir. Sure. Um, I was I was training in a gym and uh, to, to fight. And um, I had a cyst on my left shoulder blade and I went in and got it removed. And a couple days later, it was infected, wow. so they had to cut it back open and leave it open. And they said that I couldn't roll or grapple or anything for six months. Um, so in that time period, I didn't want to be away from the sport that long. So I uh, got on a plane and, and flew to Pasadena and attended Herb Dean's course. Um, and, uh, yeah, a lot of people don't realize that those courses are very challenging and very difficult. Uh, I failed it. And I uh, wow. uh, came back with a renewed uh, desire to, to uh, you know, get back and pass it, which I did. And I've passed seven other courses since then. So that's kind of how I got started. Um, you know, being a, a referee is, is difficult and uh, it should be because the, the fighters deserve the best. Sure. And if anybody could do it, then, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that the fighters get the best every time they're in there. So. That's awesome. So, so I, I honestly had no idea about that. So, tell me a bit more about this um, this Herb Dean course. Then, how how did how did that did you was it just something you looked into or? Yeah, I lived a little bit uh, in Hollywood, California, right? And uh, I I was a huge fan and watched every pay per view that came on, just like everybody else back sure. then. And uh, you know, you always say, "Well, I can do that. I can do that." So, whenever I got hurt. Uh, or it had to be on the shelf for a while. I, that's the path I d- decided to take. And when I went out there, you know, I knew the rules and I knew, you know, I, I watched the fights. So I knew, I knew what the moves were. Yeah. So I thought, man, this is going to be easy. Um, uh, I got a real, uh, crash course in, uh, uh, real life when I attended it because there's so much more to being a referee than knowing the rules and knowing what the moves were. Yes. Um, which I, no clue. Obviously, until you take the course, you wouldn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I pass the rules part easily, but there, there's a part on it that uh, you know I was unaware of, and it's the practical part where you actually have to perform the the, the hold. So, like they'll say, uh, do a Kimura, and you got to be able to do it, explain what you're doing, you know, why you're doing it, where the pressure is, and more importantly, as a referee, you got to know how to disassemble it. Yes. Um, be, because if somebody's in a, a arm bar or uh, uh, a heel hook or you know something like that and you um don't know how to disassemble it you can further the injuring the the fighter by trying to break it up if you don't know what you're doing so um you know th- those little things i i had no clue about um so i went in and i passed the the rules part and did everything real well and then we got to the the uh moves part and i was a fish out of water because i'd, <laughs> I'd watched it and done it and you know but I really didn't know what I was doing type of stuff. So, uh, yeah, failed it, came back, uh, got in the gym some more, 
uh, figured everything out and then went back and passed uh, several of the courses. So uh, it's very challenging. No, no, that's awesome, sir. And it's refreshing, actually, to have someone on the podcast sort of from, from your point of view. You know, often uh, when we do these hangouts, it's with fellow media members, if you like, and um, when analysis and, you know, decisions of jobs of the officials, we, we, we try to put ourselves in, in the sort of the referee's shoes if there's anything controversial. Um, even some of the fighters I've had on, you know, <laughs> how difficult is it? You, you, you can attest to that, how difficult it is to try and put a fighter in the referee's shoes, especially if he's on the wrong end of the call or whatever. But, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's refreshing to hear, you know, uh, your, your story. And it sort of brings me to two more recent calls in MMA, and um, particular to to the UFC 217. I wanted to get your thoughts on, on one of the big heavyweights, um, uh, our UK's own uh, Mark the Hand of God beer. Um, he, he, uh, he was involved in some controversy. Uh, he, he took a kick to the face after the referee called time for a low blow. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, Bobby, but um, the fight got ruled a, a DQ win for God beer, but there are calls that it should have been a no contest. And I'm just curious, Bobby, what your your thoughts on on that situation? You know, I don't want to say that put yourself in that referee's shoes, but um, if you have or if you haven't seen it in that kind of situation, what what would be your immediate thought? Sure, um, you know, a, a good referee has uh, the the policies and procedures down and knows you know what steps to take. And and in that that instance, um, and I will go back and say I I was at UFC two sixteen. When Godbeer and Godbeer and Harris were supposed to fight the first time, yes, uh-huh. and actually watched that fight. So getting to see the New York one, it, it was good to see it. But um, anyway, uh, there was a foul committed, and anytime there, there's a foul, um, and one of the rules is you, you can't attack your opponent. You know, you know after a foul's been committed and the referee stepped in to to stop it, mm-hmm. and th- and that's what's happened. Um, the the referee uh, c- called time. To, to you know a deal with the the foul and then uh, if I believe if I remember correctly it was a head kick correct that's correct yes yes so at that point you got you got a foul that you've, you've stopped the action for and you know <clears throat> you don't know if the the that was an intentional foul you don't know any of that at that point you don't know how severe the foul was so as a referee you got to you know call timeout you got to separate them and you got to you know assess this that foul well in the process of, of calling the timeout he throws another head kick which now is an illegal shot because there's it's timeout's been called for another foul well when Godbeer goes down from that now the referee's got a, a decision he doesn't know if the first one was intentional he doesn't know you know the assessment of the first foul because he, he'd never had an opportunity to deal with that foul mm-hmm. so now a second foul is committed and uh, Godbeer goes down and eventually is unable to continue. Um, absolutely, I, I believe the right call was made. Uh, you know, it, it followed the, the procedures um, based on the first foul, and then the second foul happening afterwards. The, the referee had no choice but to disqualify him. And of course, there was a, there was another bit of controversy that night, a, one which was ruled a no contest. You know, after the the, the heavy was caught, I forget the gentleman's name, a, the Russian fellow. Um, he was caught on the ear. I don't know if you saw that one. It almost like flicked his ear uh, to a downed opponent. Uh, and the downed opponent rule, I guess that's still not in place across the whole board. But uh, just in general, actually, let's, let's talk about that show. This downed opponent thing, you know, it's 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 it has state to state, as I understand it, different rulings in, in different places. Is it something that you think is, you know, should be universal? Or, or this palms in the ground game? What's your thoughts on this whole downed opponent rule, Bobby? I'll tell you, I think the the rules committee that made the changes to the four rules, it's now been uh, over a year ago, mm-hmm. um, with the downed opponent, the fingers, um, you know, the, the heel kicks to the kidney, uh, and the grabbing of the clavicle, um, you know, those things I, I think were fantastic rule changes. The problem we have, at least in the, the United States part, is each state is a, their own commission. So uh-huh. they're they're run by their individual. Yeah. So um, the unified rules right now aren't unified because some, like you said, some states have adopted them, some haven't, some won't, some will, some who knows what's going to happen yeah. with all of it. Um, and it's it's difficult for an official as a referee. You know, I referee I've refereed in twenty seven states, 
and it's it's very difficult to go from one state to another mm -hmm. and have to figure out what the rule set is when it should just be one set of rules. Sure. You know, when you take that frustration from a referee's standpoint and you magnify it times a million for a fighter. Mm. You know, a fighter who trains in one state and is preparing and ready to roll and then he gets to another state that that he's competing in and he finds out that the rules he's used to are, are not in, in play, um, that that can mess with someone's psyche and it can mess with their game plan. And it, it's just, in my opinion, I feel it's very unfair to the fighters. Um, I think that when the rules are passed, it should be unified and every state should adopt it and everybody should be on the same same field and everybody right. should know what's going on. And I think that's the only fair way to do it for the fighters. Yeah, have a have a universal or a, yeah, yeah, just a blanket rule. I think we can all agree that that would be something that, um, f from your point of view, you know, that refereeing and officials, we we all without sounding too cliched, we're all singing from the hymns, uh, singing from the same hymn sheet, right? It's uh, everybody right. has another a universal understanding. Uh, yeah, because that that down the down opponent rule, just in in particular, that that is night and day difference between the old rule and the new rule. So if you right. train for the new rule. And it's the old rule. I mean, you're you're in trouble. And I do think the new rule is 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 the way it should be. I think if you want to be a down fighter, you need to be committed to being a down fighter. That's right. Uh, the other way, you could have one finger down. You could go up. You could go down. You could get you know. Then, then your opponent's tended, you know kind of cautious on what to throw because he doesn't okay. know if you're down or if you're up. You're down. You're up. And then he could get disqualified. So I think the new rule is is perfect. And I think that it. It eliminates the, the the majority of the gray area, and yes. you know I just wish every state had it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, let's stay with controversial decisions. No, that wasn't my plan. But um, across the water from us here in Scotland is um, a city called Dublin, and uh, recently we had the Bellator Bama event, which saw Conor McGregor jump the cage uh, at the end to celebrate with his teammate. And in doing so, he caused uh, he caused a lot of problems, Bobby, particularly when he was <laughs> escorted away by our own Mark Goddard. Um, did you see this incident? And, and if so, what were your thoughts on it, mate? I did, and I will go back to, you know, I, I've um, messaged with Mark Goddard back and forth uh, on a few occasions, and uh, after that fight, I, I did as well. Um, however, um, as a referee, our job is, our, our number one priority and our only priority is fighter safety. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, Connor in that situation uh, should have been treated like any other fan. He he entered the cage illegally. Um, he put the the fighters at, at risk. You know, as a referee or anybody, you you don't know who's coming in the cage. You don't know why they're in there. Um, I thought Mark Goddard handled it so textbook professionally that um, you know if you go back and you watch the video, just his his demeanor. He never got rattled. He he was attending to the fighter. He was trying to come to a decision on. You know whether the fight was over, if the round was over. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, through all of that chaos that's going on, he's still, you know, keeping the fighter safety in mind, and he's mm. coming to a decision, and he never let it. You know, if you notice, Connor pushes him, and then Connor tries to get in his face, and and through that that whole way, Mark never never wavers yeah. from what he's doing, yes. and I, I think that absolute professional and you know just a tremendous representative for our sport and everything else. Uh, now, I, I don't know what will happen to Connor or, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen there. But I would say if you were in attendance and you jumped the cage, you probably have been sitting in jail that night. Yes, 100%. So, yeah. so you know, I, I don't know what will happen. I don't know if he's getting a suspension. I don't know. I, you know, that's obviously nobody knows at this point. But as far as how the situation was handled, I thought Mark just it was pinpoint. And, you know, that's one of those instances – you don't train for as a referee. Yeah. That isn't something you ever expect to happen happen to you. So for him to just be so pinpoint on what he was doing uh, was was remarkable. So I learned a lot from it. Yeah, that's well said, mate. Yeah, he was very level headed and 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 that heat of the moment. And uh, and and kudos kudos to him. Um, well, let's move on then. So UFC two eighteen just around the corner. And uh, we were speaking prior to the show, but like you mentioned to me, you'll you'll be back in the cage for this one. Tell us, uh, Bobby, how, how excited are you for the Little Caesars Arena and uh, your thoughts on maybe some of the fights on that card? Um, uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's always nice and uh, great to, to be in the octagon and 
you know, I'm excited. It's December 2nd. Um, I believe it's the first time the UFC has been back to Detroit in almost 20 years. Wow. Um, and it's a newer arena. So, you know, there's, there's a lot, uh, a lot of great things going on for the event. Then you throw in, you know, the, the hype of the, um, Holloway Edgar fight. I mean, that had everybody, you know, fired up. And then la- you know, last week Edgar, you know, gets injured yeah. and, and the, they throw Aldo in. I mean, that that card's got five fights on the main card that could could headline most fight cards. Oh yeah, I yeah. Mean, you got uh, you got the Aldo um, Holloway rematch, and then I mean you got the the Overeem Naganyu uh, heavyweight oh, co-main event. Yes, and 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 that they're saying is is could determine the number one contender for Stipe's next defense. That's right. So a lot riding on that, and then you, you throw in. The, the ultimate fighter coaches, Eddie Alvarez and Justin Gaethje. Amazing. I mean, that that should be that could be main event in the card. I mean, that that's going to be a heck of a fight. Then you you throw Sergio Pettis and Cejudo in there. I mean, holy smokes! And then you, I think the the opening of the the pay per view part is Michelle Waterson's fight. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it just got some amazing fights on it. Um, I think. Uh, I think it's going to be a great card. I'm excited to be a part of it, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, Bobby, it's, it's an absolute pleasure to get your time here on Martial Arts Chat Podcast. Like I said at the top of the show, it's so refreshing to hear uh, someone who's, <laughs> I feel like I'm going to shit on my colleagues now, but someone who's not got a media agenda, I guess, and someone who is uh, not getting uh, hyped for a fight. Um, it's nice to hear, you know, some someone from uh, from your side of things. So I'm glad we could finally get you on. But if people want to get in touch, want to follow your work, uh, how the best is to do that, sir? Where can they hit you up online? Let them know. Sure, you uh, can follow me on Facebook at MMA Referee Bobby Wambacher, and then uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Referee underscore Bobby underscore Wambacher. I update stuff, and I will have live. Uh, you know, I do a Facebook live from the events. So I'll uh, do that prior to uh, 218 as well. Uh, so, yeah, uh, if you have questions, you know, if any of your listeners send you any questions, get in touch with me. I'll answer everything. And, uh, you know, anytime you want me back, just let me know. Bobby Wambacher, pleasure for your time, sir. Good luck and all the best for UFC 218. Don't forget, if you've liked this podcast, then subscribe on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at Martial Arts Chat or like us on Facebook.com forward slash Martial Arts Chat. Be sure to check out our new sponsor, A1 Fight Gear, for cutting-edge boxing gloves for professional and amateur fighters, gym enthusiasts and kickboxers. Go to a1fightgear.com.